Hey guys, Ranjin here, pretty old stock of commentary is going to be the losers match in group A of the round 32 in the Avalon MSL. We are now moving on to the losers and final matches in the Avalon MSL, as I just said. We have Haya and Hwasen facing off against each other. On the outside, we're going to have Haya as the blue Terran at the 5 o'clock position, and we're going to have Hwasen as the purple Terran at the 1 o'clock position. Three player map. Hash World Tile Set, or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, so far, uh, these are basically the continuance of the matches that were played, I believe, two weeks ago. Uh, two or th maybe even more. <laughs> it's just uh, got a little jumbled up all in my head because it's been a while since I commentated those games, but it, it's been a couple of weeks, uh, a few weeks ago. And the results, the, you know, the players that lost the first match and the second match are here playing against... The losers match to decide which one will play against Luxury in the final match. Luxury, of course, went on to lose against Effort in the winners match. Effort moved on, and now we have Luxury waiting to see who of these two guys he's going to face. I'm going to see that both players are actually going for a wall off. So we're, uh, I'm expecting to see one fact expansions from both of these guys. Gas going down for Haya and. Not so far yet for Hwasen. We'll see what he goes for here. Whether he is going to put down his racks first, just complete his wall. That's what both these players are going to do. I'll start off by getting walls, then probably sending out scouts. Although Haya is putting down uh, much quicker refineries. We're going to see whether he deviates a little bit. Is putting down his racks. His racks a little bit de delayed, of course, by that refinery. So he's definitely going to have a faster factory up. Um, but I've seen yet just Hwasen just now putting down his refinery. Hwasen's statistics against Terran is actually his second best matchup. He's about 50% in that matchup. And for Haya, it's actually his worst matchup at about 41%. And really, at this kind of stage in the game, in Star Leagues, Haya has very little experience. As far as I know, he's not really ever made it. I don't even know he's ever made it to the round. I think he's made it to the round of 32 before. Possibly to round of 16, but he's never made it very far. Hwasen, however, has been a, well, a contender many, many times. He's been to the MSL, to the OSL, has been around a lot of the time, played in a lot of tournaments. Unfortunately, I don't even think, I think the round of 8 was his best finish. I don't even think he's ever gone to the semifinals. And honestly, I believe last season the MSL was a chance for him to do a little bit better. Uh, particularly in the OSL, I believe that he seemed to be showing some really, really classy play. Also in the uh, just uh, in the MSL as well, the OSL beating players like Flash and Best, just really showing off. But beating players like Jadong as well, so really showed off what he can do. Looking at the poll, 79% think that uh, Hwasen will take this rather than High, and honestly, I believe that is a fair statistic. Hwasen is overall a better player; he's a more experienced player. Now, just going to be able to kill this SCV with his Marine and the SCV just barely managed to run away. Yes, it will. So, Haya will keep his SCV alive, but not get the full-on scout. Neither player will have the scout inside. The factory is coming down for Haya. I'm not quite sure if I remember seeing that from Hwasen's side or not. <laughs> now, Hwasen actually going to start fighting the Marine with SCV. Is going to lose it, though. So, uh, some aggressive action that was unnecessary, but he felt that maybe they felt that uh, the that SCV was expendable. Two f ooh, two starports coming down for Haya, so he's changing up, and I honestly think this is a very good strategy for him. I think Haya really needs to change up, do something different to have a chance against Hwasen. Hwasen actually on the opposite side is going to go for one FAC, one FAC expansion. Yeah, I, th I thought that was kind of weird that Haya was getting that rather quick gas. Now we know what for to put down this two starports, so he's probably going to go for mass wraiths. And unless Hwasen scouts this, I'm not sure how he's going to do that. Unless he scouts this and uh, gets an armory up. To have some anti-air, or maybe in a unit eBay, he's going to be in a little bit of trouble. Overall, really, could be in uh, this uh, move by Hai could actually put Hwas in a very bad position. Hwasen only has one single marine. That's the only anti-air he has. And the marines, especially against a decent number of wraiths, they're you know nothing, absolutely nothing. Now Hai actually going to move a marine around, just uh, possibly spot some funky moves from Hwasen because. Uh, might have seen some of the funky moves that have been done by players on these maps these days, by players such as Movie, who is a Protoss player, mind you, but uh, 
you can, <laughs> all players of all races have shown that you can do some pretty pretty funky things uh, you know get some pretty funky troops pretty large decent si different sized troops through those mineral lines two star person now on the way building both uh, I assume at rates army now coming up for Kwasin so I gotta say he's <laughs> you know just stick into this one fact build he is gonna have a superior economy as long as high is not too successful Goliaths are it's gonna be a while until Goliaths come out okay control tower added in as soon as the two rates are out so the two that's gonna go around this should be able to harass the economy of Kwasin quite a lot Armory, well, I think a third's way left, like two, th three fourths away done. SCV is not being ferried, and now the raids are coming into play. Hwasin spotting now, he's gonna be in a lot of trouble. The raids are first off gonna start off by killing the SCV, that's building the second factory. Second factory is not gonna do go down. Hwasin is gonna be forced to pull SCVs off. The armory being put down, the upper left side, the, up the armory does go up. So Haya uh, uh, focusing on the factory, if he had actually gone up to the upper left, he would have been able to build to. Stop the armor from coming up and uh, make this rise just a little bit more su more successful. Hwasin is actually reacting to this by sending two tanks downwards. Most likely upgrading siege mode. Academy not being upgraded in the natural expansion, but the raids instantly go there. Spot this is CV building that probably going to start harassing it. So the armor is up. So we are going to see some Goliaths in play, and I believe Cloak is ready though. I'm not quite sure if it is quite ready, but the raids still doing a lot of damage, still running, killing a lot of CVs, and we're going to see what Hwasin is actually going to do with the tanks. High on the opposite side has some tanks of his own, and then a dropship actually coming out. So if Hwasin tries to siege from range, he might actually be in a little bit of trouble. He is going to start by running up, but there are siege tanks there for Haya, so Hwasin is not going to be able to counterattack at all. But I believe Haya has actually lost, lost one of his wraiths, most likely to Goliath play. Um... Actually, yes. Okay, okay, okay. Now I got it. Hi did not actually get cloak. He went for the dropship idea. I thought the cloak upgrade does not come in quite that quickly, I believe. But dropship is going to start off by putting on two tanks. There is the barracks that's going to spot for it. And he is, should be able to shell from a distance. Definitely going to be able to shell that academy. That Wraith as well as the dropship to use as a spotter. Kwasin going to actually pull some of his forces back. He has the Goliath as well as tanks. He's waiting for that siege mode. The Wraith is going to kill. Doesn't have cloak. So he has to be protecting himself a little bit from those Goliaths on both sides. The Wraith attacking and Hai using his tanks well. But now actually going to get them caught. Kwasin moving in close using the racks to spot for him. Wraith mar uh, barely managed to survive. But this is really when I see where I see that... Uh, Highest play just isn't up to par what it is that Hwasin can bring to the game. Hwasin has uh, what I've just very good mechanics, an overall great player, definitely a top A class player. And Hai, I believe, despite his pretty good performance in Pro League and despite him proving himself lately, just showing that he can be a very good player, I just don't think he's at the level needed. Hwasin now putting down two star ports. Uh, we're going to see uh, where this is actually, could be actually for drop ships. We're going to see where they're for Wraith play. He's putting them rather close together, not quite sure, probably not enough space. Definitely not enough space to put control towers down. So it is going to be for Wraith play. And Kaya is going to spot the dual drop ship. He's going to know that there are going to be Wraiths coming his way. The Wraith does get killed by Goliath. We'll have charm boosters at this point. Uh, gotta be kind of interesting though, if actually Hwasin, I've not seen Siege Mode for his tanks yet, but he went for Charon Boosters, we can see we actually went for that upgrade and said, Haya just now getting his natural expansion, so it's very, very late, and I'm not sure if Haya actually did enough damage to justify being so economically behind, to letting himself be so economically behind, now he has added in two more factories, so he's gonna start producing some ground troops, but he just doesn't have that much, the two tanks he had to defend, He's, you know, he doesn't really have a round anymore, but the only thing that's really helping him out, he's walled off, now adding an academy as well as an armory, to have some Goliaths to react to these wraiths that are going to be coming his way, uh, not getting more wraiths for himself, I believe, maybe even decide to focus more on dropship play at this point, but I think uh, those two starports that high up put down really came out at a loss for him, really not too successful, didn't really do too much with it. And honestly, should have been able to accomplish much, much more. Hwasin actually, no, Haya, I'm sorry, yes, no, never mind. Hwasin moving out with a SCV to the far middle left, 9 o'clock position, because he will actually try to put down an expansion. And Haya now moving out with several tanks, using a barracks as a spot of the barracks, I think was killed by Goliath. Oh, Hwasin putting down a hidden expansion at the 9 o'clock position. Of course, it's always a risk to put such a hit and expansion away. It's, it's going to be very difficult to reinforce, to protect. And if Haya spots it, he's going to be very good position to take it down and really put Haas in behind economically. Haya now going to take a mineral only at the lower left, uh, 6 to 7 o'clock. And Hwasa now is first to race down the field, has some tanks defending himself. Actually going to spot a dropship coming in, ferrying in. We're going to see who actually managed to take it down before the force get down. There are Goliaths coming in play, but I think Hwasa might actually sacrifice. Hwasa is going to sacrifice his raids to take down the dropship. But the raids, oh, the raids! 
managed to pay away escape with their lives. Critically, no cherry boosters were high. He sees he's definitely irritated having lost the dropship and didn't actually manage to get revenge by killing those two rates there. Great play there by Quasa New. Hey, hey, you know, I'll, I'll take the loss of the rates to kill the dropship whenever the hell was inside it. But somebody definitely managed to keep the, that inside as well. Haya now deciding to uh, move out. In response with his tanks, going to be able to clear up this entire line by Huas and just one single siege tank left in siege mode along with a couple of Goliaths. That's going to be completely cleared out. So now first dropship out for Huas and we're going to see what he actually tries to accomplish something with. He has a few troops in defensive position repairing his wraiths very smartly. I'm not even sure if he's using getting any more. He's just basically kind of doing what Haya did just very, very much, much later. Now adding in his third and fourth factories. He is economically ahead, but the troop count isn't as large for him. But I don't think is going to try to press the natural expansion until he really knows if he can push it up or not. Watson, of course, has a lot of force. Now adding in tanks to the ridges to really be able to siege at range.